The Game Sports Show is pleased to shout out a partner, additional home, and sponsor to Northern Superior Brewing Company, located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Northern Superior Brewing Company having a strong presence locally with many beers to offer. With much involvement in the community of Sault Ste. Marie, Northern has a sport and friendly-like atmosphere within its tap room, and during the summer months, it is a must to visit Pier 55 to enjoy some delicious food, amazing view of the water, and view of the Bush Pulley Museum right on the cusp of the Hub Trail, and of course, all of that down with a delicious brew from Northern Superior. Northern Superior Brewing company it's a northern thing booyah and it's time for the game sports show it is yours truly david mckeg and you're listening to the game sports show on the game sports show.podbean.com or on the website the game sports show.com or on the youtube channel titled scott nason it is october the 25th 2018 and we are here live for the Thursday edition of the Game Sports Show, live at Northern Superior Brewing Company here in Sault Ste. Marie, where it's a northern thing, and they got some delicious beer that you must make a part of your day or night or part in general, as Northern has many beers to offer. I want to thank Scott Nason, whom is our board operator tonight. I want to thank you, the listeners, for making the Game Sports Show a part of your night. And also, I want to thank Northern Superior Brewing Company, in particular Blake Winter and Trevor Zachary, for their great hospitality for the Game Sports Show. Looking forward uh, to our continued partnership together, uh, as it has been great so far this year. And we have a lot of big plans coming up, so make sure you keep tuned when it comes to Northern Superior Instagram or Facebook page as well as the games Instagram page and website as well. You can follow the Game Sports Show at the Game Sports Show SSM. You can also send me or Scott or anyone on the panel an email at the Game Sports Show SSM at gmail.com. Don't be shy. You may even get an opportunity to come on the show and be our special fan guest. We've already had two special fan guests come on the show, Mark Orlando and Anthony Miller. And if you want to be one of our fan guests for the month of November, do not be shy to reach out and also submit your name for your chance to be on the show for the month of November or future months going forward. For tonight's edition of the Game Sports Show, it's only going to be yours truly here tonight as uh, Brad Cochmilio is unable to make it on the show this evening due to being quite busy. It's extremely busy for him and for Sue today in terms of the football championships getting ready for tomorrow for senior football between Marys and Cora and then on Saturday be Superior, Superior and Cora for the junior side. And then obviously with the uh, Sault Ste. McGrounds and local hockey scene going on, Brad has been keeping quite busy with a lot of stories to run so he is unable to make it by as well as Justin Heichel had a schedule conflict tonight and Dane Hantro who we were hoping was going to come by tonight but he had to go back earlier uh, to fight forest fires as he only has a couple weeks left so he is unable to come by as well as well as some other pan- panel members had some scheduling conflicts and sadly we had our special guest Kevin Kane who uh, had to reschedule and he will be coming by next week opposed to this week as he had an emergency to attend to so luckily you get to hear my voice for the entirety of this show and we are going to be discussing the local hockey scene in terms of the Sioux Thunderbirds and the Sioux St. Marie grounds and also we're going to be discussing the National Hockey League as well as baseball playoffs with the World Series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Boston Red Sox and we're also going to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays new hired manager that we're going to get to to later on in the show as well so I will say in terms of future shows and previous shows, you can listen and keep tabs on the game sports show.podbean.com or on the website or the YouTube ch- uh, channel untitled Scott Nason. Last night, we had our show at Sports Center Bar and Grill, myself, Jamie, and Matt Primo talking in the pocket segment with local and professional football. Also, we were discussing the NBA with the Toronto Raptors. And you can also check out the Monday edition of the Game Sports Show from the Wicked Sister with Scott Nason, EJ Butch, and myself as well. Well, for next week, for agendas of the show going forward, after tonight, we will be back Monday at the Wicked Sister, 6 p.m. to 7, live on Radio 95.1, 7 to 8 on the Podbean page, website, or YouTube channel. And on Wednesday next week, we'll be back at Sports Center at the regular 9 p.m. time. And then next week, here at Northern Superior Brewing Company, we will be on location potentially around 6 p.m. or 7.30. We will confirm the time as the week goes on. And next week, we do have an action-packed show planned as we do have Kevin King for sure coming by next week. And we also have coach from the Sioux Thunderbirds, John Parco, coming by as well. And even, hopefully, Joey Miller to come by as well. So we got an action-packed show next week uh, for sure here at Northern Superior Boeing Company. But that doesn't mean that this show is going to be as action-packed just hearing my voice. No, no, no. We all know... 
that we have lots to talk about in terms of local hockey scene and professional hockey scene and as well with baseball. So getting underway with the show, we're going to talk about the Sioux Thunderbirds to get started who are currently in action. They, play, they are playing race side right now. They are just finishing the second period as I am uh, discussing this right now. They're up 3 nothing on race side and they are in Sudbury obviously. They do return uh, home. Uh, next uh, weekend, or this weekend, sorry, that they, they will be playing Hurst, and they also play Timmins, and then next weekend they are away at Hurst. So the Sioux Thunderbirds being home this weekend and being away for next weekend. And for the Game Sports Show, we will be covering the Sioux Thunderbirds games this weekend live on location. People are asking if the restaurant upstairs at Icebreakers, if it is going to be open this weekend. They are pushing to be open early November, so they will not be open this weekend, it seems. Uh, but it seems it will be open potentially in the coming weeks. But we'll be doing special editions of the Game Sports Show on the weekend, covering Sioux Thunderbird games and also discussing more Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds chat as well. So once again, the Thunderbirds play this weekend, 7 p.m. Saturday against Hurst, and as well as Sunday at 2 p.m. against Timmins, and the game sports show will be live on hand for those to cover for the Sioux Thunderbirds. Currently in action, as I mentioned, 3 nothing up on race side. Previous games that we didn't get to, obviously we're going to talk about, they end up falling the decision to Cochrane, uh, 6-4 to four on the 14th of October. That was a couple weekends ago as uh, they were away last weekend for their tournament over in the United States. And the games that they played, they played against Lawrence Yu and they also had a tour of a Horns and a tour of Marion U facilities and they wanted to say a special thanks to Concordia, Lawrence, Marion and the Horns for the games as well the tours and hospitality. You know, when it came to doing these games, I can recall this myself uh, going away to Boston uh, for a specific tournament uh, as well and it was such great exposure for the team and something different to do than outside your league to gain exposure not only for the Thunderbirds but for the NOJHL. So with the Sioux Thunderbirds having a pretty good showing at the tournament in terms of working hard uh, they ended up losing an OT as I mentioned in that game against Lawrence that was uh, the last game and they played against uh, Concadia U and they lost 6-3 to three, uh, that game so those were the games that were played in the action for the Sioux Thunderbirds just having a tour around and being able to see around uh, Lawrence U and Concadia and also Horn and also Maine being able to see all that was definitely a great experience for the Sioux Thunderbirds for sure and the Sioux Thunderbirds had their rankings come on out where the Sioux Thunderbirds were rated 10th in Canada previously they were rated 7th and they've also been rated 1st earlier in the year as well after a couple tough losses the Thunderbirds have dropped down a little bit more in the uh, rankings uh, Kirkland Lake has jumped ahead of them to 7th however the Sioux Thunderbirds have a very powerful team I'm sure that they can get back up in the rankings in no time and that is with no doubt. Coming into tonight's action, the Sioux Thunderbirds have played 13 games and they are 10 and 3 on the season. With Rayside already playing 19 games, Blind River playing 17 games. Blind River is considered on top of the division with 22 points being 10, 5, and 2, with Rayside being 10, 7, and 1, and 1 for 22 points. So the Thunderbirds having 20. The Elliott Lake Wildcats having a record of 6 9 0 oh, and 2 for 14 points so eagles in 16 games 6 10 0 oh, and 0 oh, with 12 points and the espinola express in 16 games for 3 and 13 for a total of 6 points in the west recap in the east the kirkland lake gold miners being on top there 13 and 3 with 26 points timmins in the second 11 5 and 1 for 23 points Powassan voodoo's 10 6 and 1 for 21 points cochran crunch 9 7 0 oh, and 1 for 19 points Hurst Lumberjacks in 14 games, 7-6-1 with 15 points. And the French River Rapids in 17 games being 3-13-1 and 0 oh for a total of 7 points. And that is the recap of the eastern side of the NOJHL. Now, as you heard for the Sioux Thunderbirds, only 13 games that they have played so far. So they have a total of 6 games to make up for race side. And they have 4 to make up on Blind River with only being 2 points behind the 2 teams. And having an action that's currently in the 2nd intermission right now with the Sioux Thunderbirds being up 3-0. It is looking good for the Sioux Thunderbirds to try to jump back up into 
tops in the Western Division. And the Sioux Thunderbirds, you know, having some good time off and being able to travel with the team. It's good team building and going forward, I'm sure they can get back to their high winning ways and get back on top in the Western Division as well. So, like as, as I mentioned at the top of the local discussion with the Sioux Thunderbirds going into this weekend, make sure you get out to enjoy some good local hockey for the Hearst Lumberjacks come to town to visit the Sioux Thunderbirds at 7 o'clock at the John Rhodes and also Sunday with Timmins that comes in to play at 2 o'clock. So make sure you have on your schedules. This is a very big schedule in terms of games this weekend locally. There's a lot of games going on. If you're a football fan, you got the city championships in high school. you got the Friday game, as I mentioned, and you got the Saturday game with the senior and junior teams, respectively. You have the Sioux Thunderbirds playing Saturday, and also they will be playing on Sunday. And the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds, right now, let me get to in just a few moments, they are currently in action over in Windsor right now. And they also play this weekend, but they are on the road playing out of town, so you won't be able to, have to enjoy them. So while they are out of town, why not come and enjoy some local hockey in terms of Sioux Thunderbirds. Again, to make sure to check out the John Rhodes Community Center this weekend on Saturday and Sunday to support the Sioux Thunderbirds. Transitioning now to the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds, who came off a pretty successful weekend uh, last weekend and last week in general by defeating Saginaw 6-3. They defeated Kingston 4-3 and they also defeated Hamilton by a score of 4-3. And as I mentioned, they're currently in action against Windsor right now and are up 1-0 in the second intermission. And they have Kitchener this uh, Friday, which will be tomorrow at Kitchener. And they also play Sunday and they play Guelph on Sunday before they return home on Wednesday where they will be playing Flint on Halloween. And then Friday, November the 2nd, they will be playing at home as well against Guelph. And then Sunday the 4th, they'll be playing against the Erie Otters. Uh, that will be at home as well. Games Wednesday and Friday at 7.07 respectively. And Sunday will be at 2 o'clock. Now, one thing I want to discuss about with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds is just the impact that Barrett Hayton has had since returning to the lineup. Now, it goes without saying that having Barrett in the lineup is a significant upgrade. Of course it is. It's a guy who is the fifth overall pick this year in the draft. And, you know, it also gives a lot of pressure off Morgan Frost and also Keegan Hottershell, who's having a great start to this year as well. And having Mac Hollowell back, having some of these guys come on back is a great improvement and just really adds to the depth and also just kind of the evenness of the team. And like I said, right at the top there, having Morgan Frost and Barrett Hayton together, it shows that it, gives, it relieves a little pressure off of Morgan Frost having Barrett Hayton into that lineup. And just one of the scariest center, center Tatums in the OHL right now. Now this team, everyone was talking about this team for being, you know what, maybe in the middle of the pack or maybe being lower end or are they going to be sellers because they might be moving guys because of their record. But right now, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds are 8-3-2 and two for 18 points for tops in the Western Division. And they aren't first in the OHL as Ottawa does have that, but the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds are second in the overall OHL. So the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds having Hayden there, having Frost, Sandbrook playing well with Hottershell playing well with Hollowell playing well, and also even Sunate of Cole McKay playing extremely well as well. Just a team that is extremely deep is really showing how that this team will not be sellers, will not be on just even the buying end. I don't even think this team is going to be buying, as we mentioned on the Monday edition of the Game Sports Show Live at the Wicked Sister, that this team has the right team put together, and they're also young. Having young players play around guys like Sam Brook, also guys around Hayden who spent some time with Arizona before coming on down, or Mac Hollowell who who is drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs, or you have Morgan Frost who's drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. You have that experience playing up there, training with those guys, having the young guys be around them. It's extremely beneficial to their development and also it doesn't hurt if they continue to be on this trend where you know what maybe the deadline do they buy maybe we do maybe we don't but you won't have to because of having this team together i like the philosophy of do they broke don't fix it and then going into this year they've had to not have that intention to buy they did have the mindset to potentially have to sell because they did not think that they were going to be probably this good right off the hop maybe management coach had thought they would have that this kind of start off the hop i know fans and i can tell you based on experience but talking to fans even yours truly being guilty 
of not believing that the Hounds would have the start that they are currently having. But it is still early in the year. But based on this team that they have and the presence that they have on the ice, it's just absolutely impressive. And Barrett Hayton coming back was an extremely huge add and just changed that whole dynamic of the team in the locker room and on the ice. So fans in Sault Ste. Marie still got some exciting hockey to look forward to with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds and even the future going forward as this team is looking young, fast, and just exciting all around. And I will say just Barrett Hayden just looking like a league of his own, just playing up in Arizona there was just extremely beneficial to his development, having those certain amount of games up with them and being around those guys with the Coyotes. Now, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, you know, are an organization that that has been very successful the past handful of years plus, ever since Cal Dubas has took over the team years ago and it transitioned over to Raptus. I know that some of the coaches that we went through, Bannister and Ivan Dean there, it's such a greatly ran organization in terms of having these young guys develop and also in terms of making the right moves. Now, Radish, we did make a lot of moves for him last year and we were unable to win the Memorial Cup or even the OHL Championship last year for that matter. So things did not work out in our area. But, you know, this team still has the capability that is on the ice right now to be successful and to have a chance to win an OHL Championship and have a chance to represent the OHL at the Memorial Cup. Again, it is only 13 games in, but they are looking great. And as the season goes on, as the people get into mid-season form, we're going to be sitting here talking about another potential team that is tops in the OHL. Will they break last year's overall record? I don't think that will happen. That was a rarity that I feel that we saw. If it does happen, great. But I, they will definitely be impressive all year. And I'm very excited to see what the rest of the year brings in terms of if they are going to add players at all or if they are going to stand put and stick to the philosophy. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. One thing that does stick out to me that's kind of outside the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds is the Flint Firebirds being 0 and 11 with 21 goals for 65 against. Now, that is a struggle there. We thought things would potentially turn around over in Flint uh, for this year, but it is not seeming to be the case with Flint uh, having the start that they have had. We know Ty Delahandria being a, a draftee of the first round, 13th overall to the Dallas Stars. You have a lot of individuals uh, that are looking at right now in terms of NHL scouting, but I don't think that a lot of scouts are going to keep looking at these certain players. You know, you have Lucas Rowe. There's a guy that was drafted by London in the first round, 18th overall back in 2017. And the, the, they are just at a, at a point right now where I hope it does turn around for them because they do have a good working team. And obviously with Ty Delahandra there, like you got to hope from a perspective of a fan for the OHL that they do ultimately turn it around as they do have the worst record in the OHL. Obviously with the next team to have a record that is not even really that close, but it's sort of close with 3-9-1 and one being Kingston. And that is over in the East division. Now, again, going back to Susan McGrounds before we wrap up the first part of the show in terms of local hockey before we take our first break. The Greyhounds 8-3-2, and two, the Sioux Thunderbirds 10-3. and three. Local hockey right now absolutely thriving in Sault Ste. Marie. Get out and enjoy the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds on either on Shaw when they're on TV or especially when they are in town at the GFL Memorial Gardens. Boy, do I love saying Memorial Gardens again. I'm always probably just going to call it the Gardens. But next week, as I mentioned at the top, they do have games back home Wednesday where they do play the winless Flint Firebirds on Halloween. Maybe wear your costume on that night as that is Halloween get your kids out there for some trick-or-treat at the Hound game maybe go before the Hound game and then go after the Hound game surprise them do whatever you want but that's going to be a spooky night there at the Memorial Gardens and then for Friday and Sunday against Guelph and Erie as well very exciting hockey coming up in the realm of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhound so I will say the Sioux Thunderbirds are home this weekend but they're gone next weekend the Sioux Greyhounds are gone this weekend but home next weekend there's always a supply of hockey here in Sault Ste. Marie, it seems, between either the Sioux Thunderbirds or the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, so a lot of good hockey to enjoy. So ensure that you do. You can check out the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds website and get uh, information on times of games, the schedule, and also the tickets. As well, you can go to the Sioux Thunderbirds website, which you can connect through NLJHL.com or right on the Sioux Thunderbirds website, SiouxThunderbirds.com. So can't, you cannot forget that. And you can get on there and get information for tickets and also games. And as I sit here, before we go to our first break, it's Thunderbirds have made it 4 nothing, and they are in the third period with 15 minutes left. Now, 
It's Dave McKay here live at Northern Superior Brewing Company in Sault Ste. Marie. And we are just talking local hockey in terms of the NOJHL, the Sioux Thunderbirds, the OHL, and the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. It's yours truly just for the night. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to have part two of the show, and that is going to be discussion about the National Hockey League and also the Toronto Maple Leafs, of course, with discussion of Major League Baseball before we conclude tonight's edition of the Game Sports Show. We're going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. It's the game on thegamesportshow.poppy.com, thegamesportshow.com, or on the YouTube channel titled Scott Nason. The Game Sports Show is pleased to shout out a partner, additional home, and sponsor to Northern Superior Brewing Company, located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Northern Superior Brewing Company having a strong presence locally with many beers to offer. With much involvement in the community of Sault Ste. Marie, Northern has a sport and friendly-like atmosphere within its tap room, and during the summer months, it is a must to visit Pier 55 to enjoy some delicious food, amazing view of the water, and view of the Bush Pulling Museum right on the cusp of the Hub Trail, and of course, all of that down with a delicious brew from Northern Superior. Northern Superior Brewing company it's a northern thing the game sports show would like to thank an additional sponsor and special edition home to the game silver creek golf course located on 104 bellow lake road garden river ontario and also shout out thank you to silver creek gm jamie henderson silver creek golf course has many specials to offer for 18 holes nine holes and even twilight deal specials it does not matter what your level of golf game is it is a must to enjoy the scenic course memorable experiences that silver golf course offers silver creek also also offers a Thursday wing night for you to enjoy food after a stellar time on the course. You can book your tea time by phone or online at GolfSilverCreek.com. Silver Creek Golf Course, where all are welcome to play. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor, an additional home to the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. That Sports Center enjoyed their famous 75 cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. Get Wicked Catering from the crew at the Wicked Sister. We like to think of ourselves as foodies. While our favorite foods are paired with a beer tasting at the Wicked Sister, you can now have the same creative menu for your next catered business luncheon, family get-together, wedding, or holiday party. Our white truffle risotto appeals to your gluten-free and vegetarian guests. Add sautéed shrimp or freshly grilled chicken for a pop of protein. Or let us build you a custom menu to suit your needs. From plated events of 15 to buffets for 200, the Wicked Sister will cater your event with tapas, snacks, craveables, or a full sit-down dinner. The Wicked Sister, where you'll be treated like family, whether you like it or not. The Game Sports Show would like to thank a list of additional sponsors. North Shore Sports and Auto, new location located on 647 McDonald Avenue, Sault Ste. Marie. A family-owned and operated business with doing business in Sault Ste. Marie for over 10 years. Loads of products available for your enjoyment for all seasons. North Shore Sports and Auto, we understand the importance of quality service and products, and we work hard to ensure that all customers have a positive experience before and after each and every sale. North Shore Sports and Auto, meeting all of your new and pre-owned equipment needs. Special thanks to the Salon. The Salon, located on 589 Second Line East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, owned and operated by Mike Cuglietta. Book your appointment today at 705-941-9191 or via online at https colon dash dash the Salon Sioux dot as dot me dash the salon making the soup beautiful one haircut at a time as well as a shout out to the superior pro shop the superior pro shop located inside the community first credit union superior arena on 285 northern avenue east to st marie ontario owned and operated by jeremy paquin and ran by larry monroe superior pro shop for over 40 years meet all of your skate sharpening skate repair and hockey needs also to discover the canvas discover the canvas Located on 317 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. A beautiful new renovated building owned and operated by expert artist and Sioux native Katrina Tipito. Katrina taking her talents of the ink in Sault Ste. Marie and truly creating the best and most realistic art locally. Call Katrina today at 705-450-8099 or email her at discoverthecanvas at gmail.com to book your tattoo or consultation today. Hi, this is Joe Bowen and you're listening to the Game Sports Show from Sault Ste. Marie. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show. Yours truly, David McCaig, here live at Northern Superior Brewing Company. You're listening to the Game Sports Show on thegamesportshow.podbean.com or on thegamesportshow.com or on the Scott Nason YouTube channel. You're listening to the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show. Now, 
Speaking of Northern Breweries, saved it for this part. We were discussing on yesterday's edition and previous weeks about the newly beer being launched on behalf of the game sports show. I am going to allow Northern Superior Brewing Company to uh, release that information when possible as you know it is going to be some delicious beer that is going to be released. So make sure you keep an eye on that for Northern Superior as well as Northern Superior has delicious beer just in general. If you want to come on by and buy a growl or buy a keg, really affordable prices here and they are available at numerous restaurants here in Sault Ste. Marie. So make sure you come on down to Northern Superior or when you're out in public, make sure you purchase a nice Northern Superior draft pitcher or growl or anything of sorts that is available at that particular location to enjoy some delicious beer because it is definitely a Northern thing here at Northern Superior. Now, we were just discussing the local hockey front here in Sault Ste. Marie with the Sioux Thunderbirds and the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. We are now going to transition in this part of the show as it is just yours truly tonight. Lucky you to the listeners hearing just one voice for the night. We're going to be talking about the National Hockey League and then we're going to transition to baseball. And we're going to make this all in one portion for a nice quick and dirty segment of the game sports show we like to call it when we have a quicker show than usual. And much to the benefit of Scott Nace and not having to edit a longer show than usual or as always is but i will definitely bring you the most up-to-date and most important news involving the nhl and just reaction with the nhl and major league baseball starting with me uh with nhl sorry i'm going to talk about the toronto maple Leafs, and that's where i'm going to start with the nhl before i transition into other news in the national hockey league as there is many games that is being played currently in the National Hockey League. We have a total of six games that are being played between Boston and Philly. Boston leading going to the third on that one currently. Buffalo and Montreal tied 2-2 at the end of the second. New Jersey and Nashville 3-2 at the end of the second. At the end of the first, St. Louis up on Columbus 2-1. Minnesota up on LA 1-0 at the end of one. And New York Rangers and Chicago tied 1-1 at uh, that is almost the end of the first period there. So a lot of games going on, a lot of tight games, you know, that is going on. And that is what my point was of stating each t- certain goal amount of the game, as they know they're going to potentially change before the end of this broadcast, obviously. But the main point that I want to mention about all those scores is the closest. The most distant game that I mentioned was the Boston-Philly game, and there was only 2 nothing going into the third there. What I have realized in the National Hockey League this year is much different than what it's been in previous years. And that is the just pure excitement of the game that is going on. And I'm just going to get to that in just a few moments after I discuss about the Toronto Maple Leafs. And speaking of the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are definitely making things exciting for fans. After having a little bit of a slump, ex-GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Brian Burke, having a little bit of fun saying that was just a flunk. Now, listen, when they had a couple games where they couldn't get any offense flowing, you know, yes, I understood it would be a flunk or be a funk, sorry, be the right word to use there. But the Toronto Maple Leafs have an offense that is absolutely so scary, and it's without William Nylander being there. And we're going to get to William Nylander in just a few moments. It seems like William Nylander has been invading the news when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, in the past few weeks, rightfully so. But you know what's been invading the news even more than that, though, is that offense and Austin Matthews and Tavares. looked like they were taking a schnooze in those couple games where they couldn't get Ws that they lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins and the St. Louis Blues on Tyler Bozak's return home. And I'm just going to get a little to Tyler Bozak in just a few moments as well. But the Toronto Maple Leafs got back into action against Winnipeg. It was last night with a big 4-2 win over the Winnipeg Jets on the road in one of the loudest arenas and one of the best arenas in the National Hockey League over my friend and listener of the show, Paul Maurice, suffering the 4-2 loss. Leafs having to get an empty netter to solidify the victory as the Winnipeg made it very interesting as the game got closer to an end with a couple quick goals in the third period before John Tavares buried a goal after Mitch Marner had had exciting work ethic to get the puck to net before John Tavares put it home. Now, with Toronto getting back into the win column and being now 7-3 and three on the season, you know, it's, it's a great start for Toronto. You know, they have 38 goals for, 32 against, and that against Mark really does scare me, though, as it always does with the defense for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But we're, we're not going to talk too much about the defense here, as a lot of the panel members aren't here to defend the Toronto Maple Leafs, nor is it this the best thing not to talk about maybe for once in extremes amount. I will briefly touch on it just a little bit, but 
with the 30 and 32 in terms of goals for and against, they have a sixth difference. They find ways to win. And that's what I want to say. Good teams find ways to win hockey games. And the Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, had a tough outing against Pittsburgh. I guess a uh, hot goalie, Matt Murray, who came back from injury and just stood on his head. And then you have the St. Louis Blues, who I feel they kind of let that game slip away on St. Louis. After having a rough road after losing to Montreal in the last few minutes, the team was kind of down and out a little bit, but they, they got their confidence back against Toronto, it seemed. And they played a very tight defensive game is what I noticed against the Toronto Maple Leafs. But now with the Winnipeg Jets and Toronto, I feel there's a lot of similarities between the teams. I feel Toronto has the edge offensively in terms of talent, just a slight edge. Defensively, I do think Winnipeg has a strength over Toronto, obviously. And in goal, I'm going to say, and a lot of Toronto Maple Leaf fans are going to say, what the heck are you saying? But I think there's a little bit of evenly matched in goal as well as Connor Hellbuck has come around the past few years. So that's a pretty even matched game, an exciting game. And i got to give credit to NBC like Scott did uh, earlier on the Monday edition of the Game Sports Show for having Toronto and Winnipeg on an American channel for Wednesday Night Rivalry Hockey. That's fantastic as Toronto and Winnipeg also play this upcoming Saturday at the Scotiabank Arena and there'll be a little home and home matchup before Toronto plays on Calgary after Winnipeg and that is on Monday when they play Calgary but Toronto has an offense that is absolutely scary when you look at that lineup it is without William Nylander right now and if you had William Nylander where are you going to throw him in that lineup well, people are going to say, you're going to put him on Austin Matthews' line. Uh, absolutely. Is he going to play with Mar with Marlo Matthews and Elander? Yes. I think that is going to be the line that you're going to see back out there. But you know what? I had an even little curiosity that why not consider putting Elander on that third line with Kadri? You know, I, I really think that the, the offense has really clicked these uh, past uh, 10 games. So why not give that a go? I know they had two games where they didn't have that sort of touch. But you know what? It seems like they, everything was clicking on Wednesday in Winnipeg. Hopefully that continues to go forward. I'm not saying that's what Toronto should do. So make sure you underline that. I'm not saying that's what Toronto should do. But I'm kind of curious if he gave Kadri a, fire, a piece of firepower. Because all credit to Connor Brown. You know, I feel that having Connor Brown in your line is a good test. He is a good third line guy, but having somebody else over and play on the other side that's not maybe Josh Levo, you know, I, I feel that having Eli there would be a better fit because I think Kasperi Kapanen and Marlo and Matthews have really clicked. I think Kapanen playing with, with Matthews is fantastic. Maybe you consider putting Marlo with Kadri. That could be an option as well. You know, that's something I could see where you can have Nylander, Kapanen, and Matthews. That would be all right. Uh, but I really think keeping Marlo with Matthews is good because Marlo does work hard and go down low. I'm not saying Kapanen doesn't, but I think Marlo having that leadership up with there is a very good addition. Now, with having Kapanen play, they just had a lot of confidence playing with Austin Matthews. So that's why I think maybe when Nylander comes back, as it seems evident that he is going to be signing a contract very soon in a bridge deal that might even be announced after the show's done. Who knows when that's going to get done. But why not consider putting him on the third line with Nazem Kadri? Give him a start, get the feet going. And if things start dwindling downhill for Kapanen and Matthews in terms of chemistry, then you can make that change. Put Kapanen with Kadri. And you have Kapanen play with Kadri and Brown as a third line, which is a pretty solid third line, if you don't mind me saying. Then you have Lindholm and Ennis playing together with Josh Levo uh, potentially being that to round out that fourth line in Toronto. So I want to get your list, the listeners take you on what you think about maybe Nylander starting the year with Nazem Kadri, if or when he does come back, because sure, Dubas says that he wouldn't trade him, but I'm sure if Carolina came a knock at him and said, yo, here is uh, Ken, uh, Justin Falk, or here's Jakob Slavin in a second round pick and a prospect for Nylander or a trade that is an attractive defensive piece for the Toronto Maple Leafs or even if the Anaheim Ducks come knocking because with Corey Perry out, they're still doing pretty well. So maybe they would like to have another piece of firepower to maintain this. What if they offer Cam Fowler or something for William Nylander? Is that something that you consider? Is that something you could swallow as Leaf fans? I personally could because you know what? I feel that they could wedge another pick out of there from one of the two teams. And with that pick, along with their own pick, they could potentially make a move with the Columbus Blue Jackets to bring in and Jeremy Panarin. Then Panarin would be that one-year rental that you would put on that first line, obviously, with Matthews. So, you know, I'm speaking a lot of things all over the place, but will William Nylander return? Yes. Do I think he's going to play this year? Yes. I think he plays the entirety of the year. And when it goes into next year, I think that's when they will potentially be looking to trade Nylander or if they are going to extend him for the same amount. But I am not crazy for saying that William Nylander has the potential of getting traded, and nor am I crazy that Toronto can look at replacing him with a one-year rental before the deadline, and Antarmi Panarin is looking at probably Toronto or Tampa Bay to be going to over in the Eastern Conference, as that seems to be probably the best fit between teams 
for him. So Toronto, though, needs to address that defensive end. I will touch on quickly, like I said briefly, the 32 goals against is not acceptable in terms of the goals that they have allowed. It's not Freddie Anderson's fault or Garrett Sparks' fault. They have a big high-scoring game against Chicago. But you know what? You have to give credit to the goals. They've been trying hard as they could. The defense, I feel, have games where they're either off or when they're on. Now, when they're on, they're decent. When they're off, they're completely off, that Toronto defense. So they do need to add a piece to that top pairing. I would like to see them add two pieces, one being a lower-end defensive defenseman, maybe like how Ron Hainsey was five years ago, and that would be an affordable piece to add, but then that one stud to kind of relieve pressure off of Morgan Riley, who's having a tremendous year, but you add that one guy like a Falk or like a Fowler, even a Jakob Slavin, or you add someone like that into that lineup, that would add a lot of assurance back there with terms of the forwards being able to look up at the scoreboard and hopefully the quick goal in your score doesn't get brought back into an even game. So the Toronto Maple Leafs we touched on there, William Nylander, how I feel the bridge deal is going to get done uh, and how his future is going to be is up in the air and the defense we've touched on. Now I will say quickly with the Toronto Maple Leafs how Babcock has really kind of seems like after losses he adjusts his practices and I really feel that they have a little bit more loose of practices after some losses I think that's a good strategy by Babcock work on those systems he knows the team that he has and he knows the team that is iced with the Toronto Maple Leafs is one of the most finest teams that's ever iced for the Toronto Maple Leafs and you know down the road if this team can keep this up and be at a position the deadline to be buying we could potentially be looking at a Stanley Cup team with the Toronto Maple Leafs and be able to say that well years in advance because what I remember there's going to be years of pain is what Babcock says they got to be years ahead of their plan it seems like and that is obvious but obviously having Tampa rid up their rear end for this year is going to be definitely competitive in the Atlantic division but those two teams are going to be the I got to say the favorites early talking here within the Eastern Conference. Now, speaking of the Atlantic Division, i got to give a shout-out to the Montreal Canadiens. I never thought I'd be saying this, but for them to be 5-1-2 on the year, I thought they'd be 1-5-2 on the season, but they are completely the opposite of that. The Florida Panthers, 2-3-3. Three, and three. I thought they'd be where Montreal is potentially in that 5-2 and two range because I thought they had a lot of development going into the end of last season. Still early, though. We're only eight games in. We still have over 70 games to go in the National Hockey League. So, you know, even teams that are tops in the league like Montreal, or sorry, like Toronto and the Tampa Bay Lightning, and even Montreal, I guess I could say, and even with Pittsburgh and teams, things can change in a matter of time, uh, in a matter of a day, in a matter of a week. But you got to give credit words to Montreal definitely deserves that and also does Buffalo and Ottawa really fighting it and staying there. But the uh, Detroit Red Wings being 1-6-2. and two. Sorry to the Michigan listeners. I know we have a high amount of Michigan listeners. I uh, apologize that you're going through that, but you had a lot of years of success there in Detroit. It's time for rebuild. I know the game sports shows own and Butch on Sports his own Butch Davis will say that they never rebuild the only retool in Detroit but I think it's time to say it's time for rebuild some of the veterans that are on that team you got to look at potentially moving Mike Green now at the deadline this year you got to make that move I think you gotta add some picks and move up in the draft they have a chance this year if this keeps up the draft a very high prospect and a very talented prospect in Quentin Hughes and have a high draft spot and I'm sure the Ottawa Senators are playing extremely hard just so Colorado Avalanche don't get a high pick in the draft I'm gonna get to the Colorado Avalanche just a few moments as well before I go into the National Hockey League's uh, parody in the league. But the Detroit Red Wings being one and six is a balanced shift in hockey. You know, if you think of the early thousands, you had New Jersey that was a, a star studded squad, the New York Rangers, you had the Philadelphia Flyers, Detroit Red Wings, you know, St. Louis always high up, San Jose Sharks. Now, don't get me wrong, San Jose is a very good team, uh, being one of the top teams over in the Pacific Division. And you obviously have the the Pittsburgh Penguins being a team that's been good for the past decade. Uh, but New York Rangers in that very tight are, are last in that metropolitan division, but with Carolina leading the way so far. But the shift in the National Hockey League has just been absolutely insane. Look at the LA Kings, 2-6-1. and one. I would never have thought of that for it to be the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, it's definitely absolutely insane. And the Edmonton Oilers are at 500. I'm sure they like being that, but that team needs to start getting things going. The way the NHL is shifting is how the way the National Hockey League works. That's what I like about the new uh, style of hockey that is so much different than it was over 10 years ago. Speaking of a team that was very successful over 10 years ago, the Colorado Avalanche, 6-2-2. Two two. Now, this organization, when Jerome McGinley signed there, okay, if you remember that, he went there because this team he thought would be a young Stanley Cup favorite team. That was over a couple years ago. Now, with 
Jerome again left that, and the reason why I brought that up is because they had a disappointing year. Now, Nathan McKinnon is an absolute stud. Miko Ratnan is just absolutely fantastic. Gabriel Landeskog is one of my favorite hockey players because he is just an absolute power forward who can score goals and is a great leader, and he was a leader at a young age for Colorado. That Colorado team is a team to watch out for in the Western Conference. You got your powerhouse teams. You got your Nashville Predators. You have your Winnipeg Jets. Also, Chicago can keep the ball rolling. They're looking pretty good. And San Jose Sharks, once they get hot, they're going to be biting away and getting a lot of wins pun intended. So the Colorado Avalanche, though, are a team that you got to keep an eye on. I am a real big fan of the Colorado Avalanche in terms of the team that they have on that ice and the way that the organization has turned itself around. And this is the teams, that, the players that they have at the helm there. Nathan McKinnon is absolutely fantastic. Now, imagine if the Ottawa Senators do finish last and the Colorado Avalanche get the first overall pick in the draft to draft Quinton Hughes. Having McKinnon, Hughes, Landis Cog, Ratton, and those guys, that team would be a force to reckon with the next couple of years and they'll be right up there with the Leafs and with the Lightning and with these young stud teams that are coming up and it's going to be a very competitive NHL for the rest of this year and obviously going forward excited to see how this is going to continue going into the season and even beyond as well but we're still in this year and speaking of this year like I said in the National Hockey League at the very beginning of my professional hockey discussion the parity in the league the even matched and how everything is just fantastic in the National Hockey League in terms of excitement. And ever since this has started here in this segment, we've had only a couple of changes. We've had Montreal, who is currently leading the Buffalo Sabres now. Uh, we have Columbus, who's currently leading the St. Louis Blues by one. Everything is all one goal game still, except the Boston-Philadelphia game that remains 2 nothing late in the third period, as I currently sit here and discuss. But, you know, it's all these games... Are, are just absolutely amazing. And one game I cannot forget that's also on tonight. There's a couple more. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks in Dallas is 2-1 Dallas there. 0-0 for Calgary Pittsburgh. It's just starting Washington Edmonton 0-0 games. But with Dallas and Anaheim there being 2-1, a lot of g games except one or one goal games currently as I sit here. And the reason why games are so tight and late into games is all the games except for the last few I just mentioned there are one goal games. Because of just how evenly matched the league is, all those, the game has changed in terms of speed. It's changed in terms of how, how the, the culture shift. Everything has changed in the National Hockey League. And that's what makes every game exciting. It doesn't matter if your favorite team has a night on or night off. You flip it to a game on the NHL Network, on TSN, on Sportsnet, on NBC, on Fox Sports, anything, any game that you're watching, you're in for a very exciting hockey game. And a game that's going to provide uh, you with a lot of entertainment because of speed on the ice and that's why the Montreal Canadiens have had a lot of early success is that hard working team and that hard working mentality same with the Colorado Avalanche a team that has that talent that they're really hard working and they're a very fast exciting team to watch just like the New Jersey Devils you know that it's a, another exciting team Buffalo who's starting to turn things around bringing, bringing in Skinner and drafting Dolly a lot of excitement going around the National Hockey League and I I will say this is a game now that has veered away from the fighting from the from the from the hit and pound style, but there's still that two way factor. If you're a fast hockey player and you're a two way hockey player, you're gonna have a lot of success in the National Hockey League, more than just a one dimensional player. Still, I know a lot of people think it's a skaters league now and a one dimension offensive league. Sure, they have a very good point, but I think if you're a two way player that grinds, that works hard, and can score goals, you're one of the top players in the National Hockey League. That's why I'm a big fan of Gabriel Landeskog. I know a lot of fans aren't a fan of this individual, uh, but Brad Marchand, you got to give the guy credit. He works works hard yes he's cheap but he gets and puts up numbers you know I'm also uh, a big fan of how uh, Max Domi plays as well who's having success earlier in Montreal so that two-way style that works hard yes Domi suckered Aaron Ekblad some dirty players that I mentioned that had some dirty plays recently but they work hard and they can score goals and that's the way the National Hockey League is it's fast two-way style hockey that gets the job done. Not the two-way style hockey where you are crushing guys to the boards, but you're not afraid to block shots. You work and get your nose dirty to get the puck out. You skate up the ice. You create an on-man rush, and that is where you get goals to put up your team to victory. So the way the National Hockey League is playing, it is just great, but i got to give a shout-out to Connor McDavid, who has actually just popped up on my screen as well as I sit here getting ready to say that point. The guy looks a lot different this year. That flow looks disgusting. That stride looks absolutely amazing. He looks even faster, if that is even any way 
way, shape, or form possible. And it's too bad that Dana isn't here tonight because I know he would be very happy to hear this. But with Connor McDavid at the helm and Edmonton, you know what? I hope that Edmonton does kind of turn it around because of the talent that they have there. Uh, but the way he's just skating this year, he looks like he's been working out differently this offseason. And, you know, Leon Dreisaitl looking a little bit different and a lot of different training regimens, it seems, with those two guys. And that is what kind of players are modeling their game after is the speed of McDavid. Yes, there's uh, Garrett Sparks who said that Kasperi Kapanen is the fastest player on the planet. And with the Edmonton Oilers adding the two eyes on comments on Instagram, you can look at that on the Toronto Maple Leafs page. I would love to see Captain race McDavid, but Captain may beat him off the start a little bit to the blue line, but as soon as McDavid gets dry, maybe you only take him four strides, get to the end of the ice. So uh, the point of me mentioning McDavid is just the, how he has really set the tone for how the game should be played. He's a guy who is two-way style, who will go in the corners, work hard. He may not add that bone crushing hit, but he will get out with the puck. He's not afraid to go down there, and he'll skate down the ice with pure speed and create that odd man rush. And that is how a lot of players today are successful. It doesn't... It, 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 it doesn't hurt that he's also a very tall man as well and is thickening out as he gets a little bit older as well. So the National Hockey League, I will cap off by saying that just the overall parity in the league is what makes everything just exciting. And when there's a game on now, it's not like I'm turning it off because it doesn't matter who's playing. Even if it's Detroit and one of the lower standing teams playing, like I mentioned, Detroit potentially playing uh, the St. Louis Blues or LA Kings rather right now or even the Arizona Coyotes I'm keeping that game on because it's going to be a very exciting game to watch nonetheless but we did certainly got some exciting games this weekend one in particular as I mentioned a little bit earlier the Leafs and Jets at home and home is going to be a very good game as Paul Maurice who used to coach the Toronto Maple Leafs returns back to Toronto and obviously the Jets looking for redemption against the Toronto Maple Leafs the Atlantic Division leading Maple Leafs who are two games above the Tampa Bay Lightning as Lightning are 6 1 and 1. And those two teams, Leafs and Lightning, I can't wait till they have a showdown this year. Now, other news in the National Hockey League I want to mention Nate Schmidt getting an extension with the Las Vegas Golden Knights. He has signed a six year extension, and that's a $5.95 million average annual value for Nate Schmidt. Obviously, the contract will. Uh, begin next season. It runs through 2024-2025. He is 27 years old uh, and he was awarded an arbitrator contract of $4.45 million. That's what he's getting paid this year. He has been suspended for the first 20 games without pay of the season due to violating NHL and NHL Players Association Performance Enhancing Substance Program, but he is eligible to return November 18th against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. You know, a friend of the show Somebody who's been on the show, no stranger to the show, and a friend of mine, Colin Miller, sends a lot of praise for Nate Schmidt, as do a lot of the fans of hockey, as in terms of being in Washington, how he was there. I'm surprised that Washington had to let him go, but maybe try to, them to try to find a way to keep him, but that's the way the business is, especially in the cap era. Nate Schmidt was a steal for Vegas, and he is a great defenseman for Las Vegas as well. Well, other news, uh, you have Brian Boyle, the New Jersey Devil, says his cancer is in remission, which is, which is you know, when you battle cancer, it was very, very hard, uh, obviously, to as a fan of the game, uh, to, to see when someone has that. And such a great person that Brian Boyle is. And Brian Boyle, who was a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs briefly, uh, he was diagnosed with chronic melanoid uh, leukemia prior to last season. And the NHL.com article shares that uh, said his cancer is in remission after receiving results from his most recent blood test. Uh, a test looks at the leukemia cells in the blood. When he was first diagnosed, it was 75%. At the end of last season, it was 0.08%, and now it was 0.04%. And the results showed all zeros all on Monday, and it's in full molecular remission, and he feels really good. So congratulations to Brian Boyle on feeling better, as that is fantastic to hear for him as we wish him a continued speedy recovery. Mike Green of the Red Wings uh, could make a season debut against the Jets. Mike Green, who I, is going to be one of my subjects to trade rumors for the entirety of the year until the trade deadline. He's going to think that if Detroit keeps this up, that he will be looking at potentially moving on. So with Mike Jet return, Mike Green, or sorry, Mike Green returning against the Jets for the Red Wings, will that change? The landscape or will improve the Red Wings. Yes, it will definitely improve them, but they are still on the side of rebuilding. So then keeping him aboard as the year goes on, 
Um, and especially Pasadena, I'd be very surprised to see. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks turn to emergency backup Foster again. And he's going to be helping out with optional skates. You know, you have Foster who showed up in the game earlier last year, which was just absolutely uh, fantastic to see it when he showed up to play. Uh, it's definitely someone's dream. You just strap on the pads and you show up to play. And he had a shutout performance in the third period for the Chicago Blackhawks. Looks like he's going to be playing some for some more practices for Chicago and going to be used as an emergency backup still. Now, the NHL power rankings also came out. For the NHL power rankings, you saw the National Predators over top of the, the uh, top of the, of the rankings, followed by Tampa Bay, Winnipeg, Toronto, and Pittsburgh ran out the top five. Colorado Avalanche being seventh, and you got to give a shout out to the Carolina Hurricanes being in tenth, and the Montreal Canadiens being in twelfth, whom were not rated last week, as I mentioned earlier, being a big surprise at the start of this season. So. What do you think as listeners? Yes, it's still very early. you got to pump the brakes on all this excitement, as Justin Heichel would say. But you know what? At the end of the day, we are seeing some exciting hockey, and I think that's how it's going to be for the entirety of the season. One person that will not be playing hockey at all and for the first 20 games as the commissioner has upheld the suspension is Tom Wilson with the Washington Capitals. I want to know if you agree or not. I will be honest and just say quickly that I do agree that the suspension should remain upheld as it was a pretty nasty hit but at the end of the day you got to make sure you take those hits out of the game but one thing they should for sure not take out of the game is fighting you know they might have changed away from that it's not how the game is but you know it's still a part of the game it could be something that could be enjoyed by fans moving forward from the national hockey league now we are going to jump right into major league baseball uh we have uh about Five to ten minutes left on the show before we wrap up tonight's show here from Miller Spirit Brewing Company. You're listening to the Game Sports Show on the GameSportsShow.podbean.com, the GameSportsShow.com, or on the YouTube channel titled Scott Nason. You know, the Los Angeles Dodgers are down 0-2 in the World Series going back to L.A. And it is for sure, as the MLB.com website will say, right as soon as you see it, Home sweet home for the Dodgers. Absolutely. You know, you have Manny Machado and his Los Angeles Dodgers looking to rebound in the series as Bueller goes on the mound for the Dodgers having a great season thus far. And Rick Porcillo, who had a good season as well in terms of wins. High ERA with 4.28. But you know what? Again, the Boston Red Sox looking freakishly, freakishly sorry, good for these couple games in the series. And... I got to tell you, uh, even though JD's uh, mar- uh, status for the game in three, I don't think it'll make a difference for the Boston Red Sox. You know, his ankle is still sore for JD, uh, for JD Martinez, that is. He had that awkward slide over in game one, but that lineup that Boston has with Betts, Ben attending, uh, it's just looking absolutely phenomenal. They're looking like they're above everything else right now. And this World Series, I thought would be a bit more exciting. I actually thought that the Los Angeles Dodgers would split the games in Fenway, to be honest. But after, I'm actually one who said that the Astros would make the World Series. Obviously, I was incorrect. So maybe it's not my recommendation to take. But, you know, winning 8-4, then winning 4-2 in a tighter game. You know, going back over to L.A. where they have a chance to win the World Series because there's three games there uh, against Los Angeles where they have to spend at L.A. before 6-7 and seven will be in Boston. you got to say that the Boston Red Sox are just looking like a team possessed for the entirety of this year. And, you know, you, you had Mookie Betts with three hits in the game. You had... Uh, you, you had big J.D. Martinez so he did play uh, last game and he still managed to hit even despite his injury Vogarts who's looking good he looking like a real leader in the field along with Ian Kinsler as well over at second base getting a hit Jackie Bradley Jr. and Vazquez batting at the bottom of the order getting some big hits but Mookie Betts obviously being the guy to get a lot of hits Steve Pierce batting third in the order playing full time first base who started with the Blue Jays this year is looking absolutely great as well just a fit of that team and the dynamic of that team all around is looking great, but you can't count out the Dodgers. Having Dozier, Machado, Peterson, uh, you, you know, Matt Kemp at DH who can hit bombs at any time. And Yasiel Puig, obviously, who hit that big home run against the Milwaukee Brewers to get them to uh, go to the World Series. 
in Game 7. It's it, This is an exciting World Series for both teams uh, based on just the rosters, but Boston being up 2 old, they have shown that they are the better team going forward, especially in Game 1, going up 8, winning 8 to 4, and going back home on a, uh, or going back to LA, rather, sorry, uh, with a 2 old World Series record is absolutely a little bit of a shock to me, as I mentioned. But the Red Sox, I feel, going back to L.A., L.A. has to win Game 3. Now, it's an obvious statement. Pivotal Game 3 it is. If the Dodgers lose, I am willing to bet almost an extreme amount of money to say that the Boston Red Sox are not a team to lose four games in a row. But nor would I say that about the Los Angeles Dodgers if Boston wins. So who am I to even to say that? But for the Dodgers to go down 3-0, that would be really hard to battle back from. If they can get that win in Game 3, have a good lights-out pitching performance by Bueller, and also capitalize with runners in scoring position at all times. You have the bases loaded. Maybe you go up there instead of hitting a pop fly, Matt Kent. Maybe you, put, maybe you try to hit one into the seats. So you get a big lead going or try to get ahead in the game. So the Los Angeles Dodgers, can, if they can pull away with a win, they will have some confidence and they'll have a chance to tie the series in game four. And I feel that they will. I feel that if they can win game three, I feel that going back to Boston, they will be have a chance to be only down three to two. I don't think they can steal all three or I don't think they can steal all three games from Boston at home, but I feel like they can steal two as long as they get the win on the that would be Friday at 809 starting pitch time. But if they lose and they go down 3-0, I do think Los Angeles does have a, a chance to win one game. But that is about it. If Boston wins the next game, they will win the World Series in Los Angeles. But one thing i got to say is Manny Machado's got to step up there and make those extra hits. Camp has to start getting the ball over the fence a bit more and get those powers to capitalize in with runners in scoring position. Boston just has to keep doing what they're doing, get hits throughout the lineup, play smart defensively and also over Steve Pierce over first looking like a flexible 21 year old over there making some big plays and Mookie Betts is looking fantastic he's really emerged as the leader for the Boston Red Sox obviously never mind JT Martinez or sorry JD Martinez hitting home runs even with him potentially not playing in game three there that lineup is still very deep and with Parcillo being on the mound, there's a chance to win every game when he is on the mound, just like everyone on the staff of the Boston Red Sox. But the Dodgers do have the lineup potentially to get back into the series. So do not count out the Los Angeles Dodgers, not just yet. Moving on to more sort of off-season news when it comes to the baseball front. You have the Jays have solved their manager vacancy by hiring Charlie Montero away from the Rays today on Thursday. He has signed a three-year contract with the club option for 2022. He has been named the 13th manager in Blue Jays history and they'll be holding a press conference for a Monday at the Rogers Center. He's 53 years old. He interviewed with the Reds and he's spent 18 years uh, as a manager in the Rays minor league system and he was recently a bench coach for the overachieving Tampa Bay team that made extreme excitement and waves for its unique in-game strategies and implementation of advanced statistics. I took that quote from MLB.com from uh, Gregor Chislam. As you know, greatly said there, couldn't have said it any better, but that's uh, what I wanted to say about Charlie is that he has been given credit for the way the team overachieved did the Tampa Bay Rays. So I'm kind of intrigued about this hire. A lot of people are like, hey, what about Joel Girardi? Why not potentially uh, maybe bring up McDonald? There's a name about uh, John McDonald even getting his name thrown around some managers. So why not look at that as a potential? You know, but making this hire seems like a good move. And there's a guy that spent a lot of time in the minor league system. Look at the Blue Jays team. Gurriel, Vlad Jr., Bo Bichette. A lot of the young guys are coming up. I don't expect Vlad to be there next year. I still think he needs one more year in the minors. But you have to think. That, that little minor league experience, plus his veteran side and his age, he can work with these young guys and give them that experience. He also had a good season, as I mentioned, in Tampa Bay. We have to give this guy a chance. I saw all the Instagram posts say, who's this? What this? Who this? Who this? Who that? Enough of that. Give this guy a chance. I actually like this hiring by Adkins and Shapiro. And I haven't been a fan of a lot of moves from Shapiro and Adkins, but they have done a lot of things 
uh, in terms of uh, really dissecting, I think, this manager position. They took the time needed. They interviewed guys, and they interviewed and hired the right guy here with Charlie Montaro. And as Charlie said, quote, unquote, I am extremely honored and humbled to join the Toronto Blue Jays organization. And he thanked Shapiro and Atkins for the opportunity. Now, basically, the most common way to say things, obviously, uh, but he also continued to say managing a team that represents an entire nation is incredibly special. His family and himself look forward to working towards the ultimate goal, winning a championship for the city. And then he continued on to recognize the Tampa Bay organization for a chance to coach his career as he spent 18 years within that organization. So rightfully so, giving them credit. I like and trust what Tampa Bay does with their system in terms of players and managers. I like this hire. I am a fan of this hire. And for him to say that it represents an entire nation is incredibly special, I hope that not just managers look at that, players look at that as an opportunity to come here and make a difference for Toronto sports. Because if you win a championship in terms of Raptors, Blue Jays, or even for hockey, you will most likely get the key to the city. Not saying that he'd be the reason they get the key to the city, but at the end of the day, him bringing here and transitioning this youth implementation of the team and having his expertise in terms of working with the minor league system and his time in Tampa Bay that obviously was extremely beneficial this year based on statistical guideline. We all know stats is a thing when it comes to management in Toronto. Just look at Kyle Dubas. It seems like it's been paying off on that end, so maybe it'll pay off for the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome aboard to the nest, to Charlie Montero. Now, quick thing I'm going to get to in terms of baseball, the Gold Glove finalists were listed as well. A lot of elite defenders were named to this list. Uh, you know, you have pitchers for the National League, Grinky, Rich, uh, Clayton Richard, and Julio Terran for getting nominated the American League, Dallas Keiko, Corey Kluber, and Mashinel Tanaka. You know, you have catchers, y- Yadalia Merlina, Manny Pena, Buster Posey, Jan Gomes, Martin Malinando, and Salvador Perez. And a list of names just continues to go on. You know, you have Freddie Freeman who got uh, nominated, Rizzo, Justin Smoke from the Toronto Blue Jays get nominated for that. You also have Kinsler for the Red Sox. You have Javier Baez and Wong uh, from the National League. You have Crawford. You have Aldrian Simmons. You have Francisco Lindor. Uh, Jose Ramirez, Nolan Arenado. Uh, sorry. You have Ben Attendee, Christian Yelich, Lorenzo Cain, uh, Bradley and Mike Trout, Jason Hayward and Aaron Judge, Mookie Betts. A lot of big names being nominated in there. And for you, the listeners, I want you to comment below or send me a message or an email at thegamesportshowssm at gmail.com to let me know who you think the winners are of each award is going to be for uh, the outfield and infield for the National League and American League uh, nominations. Definitely exciting. I like to see how Justin Smoke is in there. He is great at first base and definitely a player that I thought they would consider trading, but they end up not trading him this year. Uh, but having him at first base is a defensive absolutely exceptional status for the Toronto Blue Jays and rightfully so he was nominated for a gold glove will he win that remains to be seen as he is in tight company with Mitch Moreland and Matt Molson Matt Molson having a good year with the athletics but I really think that Justin Smoke has a chance to win I will say that so that does it for tonight's show here on the game sports show live from Northern Superior Brewing Company action pack show despite just having to hear my voice we talked with the Sioux Thunderbirds. We talked to Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds. We talked professional hockey in terms of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the National Hockey League news and updates and just reaction on the parity in the league has been. And we also talked Major League Baseball playoffs, the Blue Jays hiring a new manager, and also there to conclude the show with the Gold Glove nominations. Future agenda for the show, as I mentioned, we'll be back at the Wicked Sister on Monday at 6 p.m. live on Eagle 95.1. We will have our scheduled shows at Sports Center Wednesday and at Northern Superior back here on next Thursday. Here Thursday, we do have Kevin King coming on, and we also have John Parco coming on as well, John being the head coach of the Sioux Thunderbirds, and hopefully Joey Miller doesn't have to spend too much time studying for his midterm that he's able to come on by as well. So make sure to make the Game Sports Show, as always, a part of your night. Now, I want to say a special thank you to all of our sponsors as well, obviously including one of the homes and the main home to the Game Sports Show, North Superior Brewing Company. Shout out to other homes of the Game Sports Show, Sports Center Bar and Grill and the Wicked Sister, along with additional sponsors as well. Pingator Cleaners, North Shore Sports and Auto, The Salon, The Superior Pro Shop, Northern Critters Need, Big Brother, Big Sister, Ken Belanger, Hockey, Discover the Canvas, and Northern Signs. And if you're listening to the show on the website, don't hesitate to veer over to the merchandise section 
and also purchase our shirts, the Game Sports Show shirts for $25, proceeds going towards Zona Queers of Need and Big Brother Big Sister shirts will be available to be purchased on certain locations now at Sports Center Bar and Grill here at Nona Superior Brewing Company, the Wicked Sister in Sioux City, Marine, Michigan, also at Sioux Thunder Brigades as well. Now, just before I even close the show as well, people are asking about our multiple choice game that we have veered away from since the summer. Yes, there is a reason for that. We're waiting until January to relaunch the multiple choice and we're going to be doing it in different fashion. We're going to be saying the question of the trivia, or sorry, of the multiple choice question and we will be putting it on our website is where you'll be able to answer opposed to send in an email. When you just look at our website, you'll put in your, you put in your answer and your name and at random, the, the name will be picked and the prize on uh, courtesy of one of our sponsors will be given to you. So we do hope that that might be earlier, but it projected for the multiple choice to get back up will be in January. So until next week, I want to say thank you to Scott Nason, our board operator. I want to say thanks to Blake Winter and to Trevor Zachary and the Superior Brewing Company. And also to you, the listeners, for making us a part of your night. And until next time, listeners, keep your stick on the ice, swing your bat, catch your touchdowns, Drain your threes and shoot your shots. Booyah.